Hello, and welcome to day two of Transformina. Today is also Earth Day, a, a day where the world comes together in support of environmental protection. I'm Emily Favel, and I'm the head of program management for Siemens Expo 2020 Premier Partnership. And for today's, today's special Earth Day fireside chat, I am honored to be joined by Mr. John Bull, the director of the Sustainability Pavilion at Expo 2020 Dubai. John, thanks so much for joining me today. It's a real pleasure. I'm looking forward to speaking to you. Thanks. And now, now, John, the Sustainability Pavilion actually has a name, Terra. For our Transformedia audience, could you share a bit more about the importance of that name? Yeah, of course. Terra means Mother Earth. And it's a constant reminder for us and all our visitors as they come through the experience that we're enormously privileged, lucky, fortunate, blessed even to live on this planet, on this unique resource which meets all of our needs and all of our wants. And it reminds us that it's special and that we should place it in our hearts and protect it with all that we can. Well, and, and I really love that. And I think also the stories within Terra are, are what are so important as well, right? They have, they have a global impact and they challenge each and every one of us and really each and every visitor to reflect on our daily decisions in a, in a new way. Now, knowing that you had that chance to influence the entire world, how did you arrive at the final content for the Sustainability Pavilion? And, and what do you hope is that lasting impact of Terra? It's been a, a soul searching time in many ways. Over the past four years, I've been lucky enough to be with Expo. Uh, from the time when it was just Terra was just a circle in the sand to today, every decision we recognized it would have the power to resonate or it faced the fear of being what sometimes sustainability falls into a trap of, of being judgmental. So that responsibility really, really was profound for us. And if you layer on top of that, our understanding that we would have visitors from all over the world, from every different background, speaking multiple different languages of different ages, we knew that we had to build something that connected with people on a very, emotional and core level that worked across all of humanity. So the pressure we put on ourselves was to make sure that everything that we did worked for the school child and the businessman, the politician, and that nobody could walk past a single exhibit without it sparking thoughts and ideas in their mind. Absolutely, and, and one of my favorite parts about Tara is actually, um, I've heard her referred to as she a few times, I um, mean, this personification really resonates. And I'd love to hear more from you about the decision to personify the Sustainability Pavilion and also the impact that that has when we consider our, our buildings, the infrastructure around us as part of the living ecosystem. How does that influence our interpretation of sustainability? Yeah, you know, I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to admit there never was a decision to, to okay. refer to Tara as she. In, in a way, she demanded it of us. She's got such a strong personality and a presence and a voice in every space that you go through, whether it's just walking underneath the canopy, through the gardens with the butterflies that are flying around you, or you move into the galleries where they're darker and immersive and there's flashing lights and moving content. And every time Tara speaks to you as a visitor and certainly as a person who's lucky enough to work there, and she has a strong... would feel wrong to call her an it, a, a simple building. She doesn't stand there without a connection to us. Terra is all about conversations and even the building and the experience is an active player in those conversations. And I must say technology like Siemens Mindsphere is allowing us to tell that story in fabulous ways that the visitors can interrogate and understand how, how she is performing on that day and how uh, that's their impact on the building is affecting that in many ways. And we hope through all of those many interfaces that we've created that she will have the impact that she wants to have. She wants to deliver on Expo's vision to connect minds and create a brighter and bolder future. She wants everyone to leave that place thinking differently, 
everyone buzzing about ideas of things that they can change in their lives, everyone taking inspiration from the way that they've seen Terra captures energy or reuses water within its within her systems. It, all of those things together, she's she's not passive in this conversation. She's active and she has a lot to say. And and I couldn't agree more. I actually had the good fortune to to visit Terra on uh, over the weekend, and it's really just impressive the conversation that uh, you get to have with her and um, the impact that she has on so many people already during the Pavilion premiere. Um, we've had a lot of, of good talk about Terra, but there's other aspects of sustainability taking place at Expo 2020, of course, from the, the bees that were rehomed during the construction phase to the gas tree that will remain in legacy as a symbol to future generations. Could you share some of those other aspects of sustainability that will be taking place across the site during the event? Absolutely. We're working incredibly hard to do everything we can to ensure that Expo is one of the most sustainable world events ever held. And you're right, in terms of biodiversity, you can't help but see the butterflies, the bugs, the birds flying from the many species of trees that we've planted, the gaff and the uh, olives, other trees all over the site. It's such a green and beautiful space to be in. And we're working so hard to make sure the way that we've constructed everything has been sustainable through to the core. We worked to ensure that at least 85% by weight of all the waste that we're creating that throughout and onwards is segregated into different streams so that they can be reused, recycled, repurposed. We're also working to ensure uh, that we reduce our energy demand in all of the buildings that we produce. And we're looking to make sure that our buildings use around 20% less energy if by comparison to comparable buildings elsewhere. Of course, every building that Expo is building is at least LEED gold standard accredited, which is a standard for assessing, as, you, as I'm sure you know, the environmental credentials of, that, of those buildings. Sustainability is absolutely at the core of everything that we're doing. Wow, that's really exciting. It's, it's, I'm especially excited to see it play out during the event phase. Um, so thank you for sharing all of those ideas with us, not only about Terra, but also how sustainability can play a bigger role um, in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and with that in mind, one of my favorite sections of the Terra exhibition is the Would You Rather section, where you really challenge, or Terra actually really challenges the, the visitors to make some difficult decisions of either or in terms of what they might decide um, and, uh, to support their impact on the environment, but also just normal daily decisions. So I was wondering if you would be willing to do a lightning round, would you rather for me in honor of Earth Day? Hey, let, let's give it a go, let's give it a go. All right, perfect, sounds good. And I also challenge our audience to think about these would you rather questions as we go through them. Um, so the first one is in terms of transportation. Would you rather walk, bike, or take a hydrogen powered vehicle to work for the rest of your life? I'd love to be lucky enough to be able to walk or run to work every day. You know, uh, I'll ex uh, well, I won't be so likely and I'll explain. I just love the connection with the world around you. You get when you're outside of your vehicle and you can walk past people and plants and animals. I think that's a, one of the things we reflect on in terror really is about how humanity, all of us are healthier when we're better connected to the world around us. So any of those uh, ways of traveling um, with a light touch on the earth and an opportunity to place us in contact with the environment around them, I'm all in favor of. And uh, I seem to be clocking up hundreds of thousands of footsteps uh, since the building's been open. So I'm pretty good at walking <laughs> these days. I like that. Um, looking at the next one, um, we've all read or heard maybe about the impact that eating meat has on the environment. So if you had to look at a meat alternative, would you prefer tofu or beyond beef? Well, I guess that's a, you know what, I have actually gone vegetarian since I started working on this project because of, uh, because of the ways it's opened my eyes to the impact of many of our choices on the planet. But, you know, I can't get used to tofu. So I like plant-based meat <laughs> substitutes. I think they're the future of food without a shadow of a doubt. Um, uh, the range of diversity is enormous. And you know, the one thing that I'll say that uh, would you rather that's not even on your list and maybe I'll ask you is, uh, what about lab grown meat? Um, I, I'm really interested to see when that starts hitting the mainstream and seeing whether people uh, take that up as a, a choice for their dinner. 
Absolutely. I've read a lot about it, but I haven't had the opportunity to try any lab grown meat yet, but it's, it's on my list. <laughs> Mine too, actually. I, even though I've gone vegetarian, I, I think I would try it because it removes uh, many ethical issues and perhaps brings a few more to the table, but time to think those through. Agreed. Agreed. Um, all right. Looking at your consumables habits, would you rather get rid of paper goods for the rest of your life or plastic goods? I, oh, that, that's tough. Um, and of course, both pervasive in all areas of our lives. Hey, let me say I'll take away paper goods and um, let me give you a reason for that. I'll take away paper to give the plants a break, to give the trees a rest, to allow some greater biodiversity to arise in our forests and, uh, uh, and, the, and the associated benefits of the ecosystems that, that will love, live through those. And of course, single-use plastics are enormously negative impact upon the, uh, on our planet. But of course, the one thing that you know doesn't always enter into the conversations about plastic use is that plastic can be enormously beneficial. It can be enormously useful. It can last enormous lengths of time and avoid us wasting resources if used sensibly, thoughtfully, carefully, and in a well-managed manner. Um, and that, that, I think, is the problem, that that has not been happening enough. So, yes, I'll, I'll lose my pencils and my paper. And actually, you know, I'm trying to go paperless anyway, but uh, with, with limited success, so it might force my hands. All right. All right. Good answer. Um, the last one's tricky. I don't even know what I would answer, to be honest. But if you had the opportunity, would you rather regrow a forest or regrow a coral reef somewhere in the world? Oh, yeah, that's that. That is that is tricky. In both incredibly important ecosystems. I, I guess in my life, I've been fortunate enough to visit many coral reefs, and I've seen the devastating effects of coral bleaching. And I also seen the fabulous work here in the UAE off the coast of Fajera that they've been doing to regrow coral reefs. And I've seen how quickly and how fabulously it can bring back diverse life. Because, you know, one of the things we talk about in Terra is that coral, although it only covers less than 1% of the ocean floor, 25% of all ocean life is dependent upon coral for its life. And it is just so beautiful, and it's so weird, and it's so wondrous and diverse. That, and, you know, the ocean obviously is essential for so many parts of our life, including, of course, the air that we breathe, and the food that we consume. So I think, look, it'd be a hard, hard decision, but maybe I'd, maybe I'd go for the coral reef, but I really wouldn't want to be in the position to have to make that choice. But that's what we've done in Terra. We've asked people those impossible to answer questions because, you know, we're all gonna have to face difficult questions as the environment around us continues to change. And we are gonna have to adapt. We are gonna have to do things differently and much better that we thought about and discussed these in a place like Terra before we're forced to act uh, in the reality of the situation. Completely agreed. And like you said, Tara is, she's starting those conversations. And I think that's, that's the most important because I was just thinking to myself, if you take the coral reef, maybe I take the forest and then both are taken care of, but you have to have that conversation to decide who's taking care of what. Um, well, thank you so much, John. That's the last would you rather I had on the list for today. Um, and thank you also to our Transformina audience for joining us. Happy Earth Day to everyone. And uh, we challenge each and every one of you to think of a small change that you can make today to support our Earth's future. Yeah, happy Earth Day, everyone. Thank you.